We're going to discuss now the importance of keeping the state and the police separate and why you shouldn't have cabinet ministers calling police commissioners interfering. We're going to constitutional law uh, expert at Otago University, Andrew Geddes. Good morning. Um, thank you for being with us this morning. Why is, why is this so important? Because a lot of people who've, who've watched this, I imagine, have gone, well, I sort of agree with the guy. Why can't he say that? <coughs> well, you have to remember what ministers are. Ministers have got a whole lot of power already. They get to set policies. They can then take those policies into parliament and most of the time get those policies turned into laws. If ministers were then able to go to the police and say to the police, OK, we want you to be investigating this crime, we want you to be prosecuting these people, you start to put that extra power on top of the power ministers already have, and they start to turn into like little mini dictators. And so you really want to make sure that the ministers, the executive branch of government, isn't able to sort of tell the police what to investigate, who to investigate, what to prosecute, because you're starting to uh, just put too much power into the hands of one set of people. And if you, ha if you are questioning that, then all you need to do is put your feet in the shoes of the individual or, or the group who is you know, accused of a crime or whatever. If there is even a hint of political interference, then you're going to think that's the most unjust thing in the world. And it is, and it, and it should be called out for, for, for being that, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, we want our criminal justice system to be not just fair in actual reality, but to be seen to be fair. And any sort of hint that it's operating on sort of political favouritism or according to political motives or to keep those who are in power happy just undermines the, our ability to trust in it. So, you, you know, you don't want to just think about, oh, what's wrong with calling the cops on this, you know, uh, guy who's got too many guns or the wrong kind of guns. You want to think, if I ever run into trouble with the police, you know, would I be happy with a member of Parliament or a minister going to the police and saying, you know, I really think you should come down hard on this guy. Would you trust that system? Yeah, absolutely. He, it's, it's an odd um, response because he wasn't the police minister at the time he did this, yet he's lost the police portfolio. It, the, the crime doesn't really match, uh, sorry, the punishment doesn't really match the crime. Do you think that he should be gone as a minister full stop? Well, there's some uh, precedent here. Morris Williamson, back in 2016, also uh, got involved in a police investigation by, uh, as a member of parliament and a minister asking the police about an investigation that was ongoing. And the response then was to kick him out as a minister totally, to say, look, you know, what you've done is a breach of ministerial standards, not a breach of the standards of the minister of police, and it makes you unfit to be a minister. Now, the sanction for breaching the Cabinet Manual, breaching ministerial rules, lies in the hand of the Prime Minister. Right? It's ultimately his call as to what he thinks the appropriate response should be. He's decided it's enough to take the uh, Minister of Police's role away. Maybe it is, but, you know, it's his call and he can be judged on it. Yeah, but you're a Professor of Public and Constitutional Law, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you think, mm -hmm. do you think the public in terms of that, the importance of public trust and confidence in our judicial system, in our police, um, and the, the potential for the interference of polit politicians in that process, do you think it would send a very clear and direct message to the public that that is not OK if he was gone as a minister entirely? Yeah, look, I think he breached ministerial standards. And not only did he breach the ministerial standards, the ministerial rules, he doesn't seem to understand what those rules are or why they're there. He doesn't seem to understand what he did wrong. And so, yeah, frankly, I think he's ruled himself out as being suitable to be a minister. I think he probably should be gone from Cabinet altogether. All right. Professor of Public and Constitutional Law at Otago University, Andrew Geddes, thank you very much for your time this morning.